All right, Katie York, year two has arrived, and we welcome in former LSU All-American, current kicker for the Cleveland Browns, uh, entering his second season, in fact. Katie York, coming to us from your truck? Yeah, we have construction going on inside, so I thought it might be too loud, so I came out here. Yeah, Kate, I, uh, my producers ratted you out and said that you were doing what any 22-year-old would do, was cleaning up their car before they came, came on the television. What's back there, like uh, yeah, scraps from a Swenson's number two extra fries? Like, what's going on? No, I eat healthier than that. I had, like, a bag that I had my meal prep in last week, oh, and I just boring. need to clean it out. There's no food in there, but it's... Just had to move it around. All right, Cade. We had a very different life as 22-year-olds because that is a, I did not have my food prep bag in the back of my uh, 97 Nissan Altima with rust on it like you are at the facility in Cleveland. I'm really excited for you. I really am for this year. I think it's going to be incredible. You've got a, a, a year of NFL experience behind you now. So let's start at the beginning of the kicking journey, though. You started on that 2019 LSU championship team that a lot of people do consider the best college football team ever assembled. You, know, you had Joe Burrow, you had Justin Jefferson, you had Jamar Chase. When did y'all realize that you had something super special? Uh, well, I mean, I was an ignorant freshman coming out of high school, so I really didn't understand what was going on. I remember hearing people say uh, I was friends or lived with one of the fourth string, like, I think the fourth string quarterback, and he was telling me that Joe was going to win the Heisman this year. I was like, all right, dude, whatever. And then <laughs> we got into, like, game, like, two or three. I'm like, oh, my gosh, this is kind of cool. And then it just, like, <laughs> never lost. And then it kind of ruined – not ruined, but it spoiled my – yeah. my outlook on college football because in the next year we lost the first game. I was like, oh, that's what that feels like. So it was uh, it was special. And now I know you have to go against Joe Burrow, so you can't say that much nice stuff about him. But maybe, like, what was the moment you were like, man, he's like nobody else, or he really, he's really set apart? That fourth and, like, 15 or whatever against Texas where he threw the, like, the over the guy's helmet to Justin Jefferson for the touchdown – that was a cool play. Yeah, you answered that really quickly. I can't imagine what those practices are like. Just sit back and pop popcorn. It's unbelievable. Well, I mean, I, I do stuff during practice. <laughs> it's not like I just sit there the whole time. But, but yeah, it, once we were done with our stuff, it was cool to watch. Okay, that's really well said. That was dumb of me to say. I was thinking about what I would do at those practices. Just sit back and watch you do your stuff and then watch them <laughs> do their stuff, of course. So before you went to the NFL, you know, was it nice to say that you could have had a career with Dude Perfect being their kicking expert? Let's get into that. Oh, my gosh. I forgot about <laughs> this. Talk me well, through this. Well, it had been – it was – I was on – so that is my Avery Atkins, who's the one holding the ball right there. He was my holder my last two years at LSU. He was a punter kickoff guy. And uh, he uh, – What? So catch LSU bar stole. Yeah, he catched it on the jet ski. LSU, we were on this trip when LSU bar school bar stole tagged me and someone else doing like a different version of this. So it was like our mission at the lake that day to do this. So we woke up and went out and had some guy on the jet ski and it took us 15 tries. 15? Which it's low. I would like to say it took me like three tries, but it, it took some calculations. So 15, I don't think that's that bad though. Yeah, I mean, who, it was the jet ski's fault, right? For sure. I, I hit every <laughs> ball perfect. <laughs> That's what we like to hear. Uh, you know, I was at the NFL draft a couple of weeks ago now. Gosh, that was in Kansas City and the Niners. They took a lot of heat for drafting Jake Moody in this third round. I don't see any edge rusher pulling off a trick like that that I just – I don't see any D tackle doing that. You were drafted in the fourth round last season. I would like you, uh -huh. Cade, to defend why kickers should be drafted in the first four rounds. I mean, I love it. I, 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 I hope that someone next year gets drafted higher than Jake. We had actually there was two guys drafted higher than me this last year, Jake and Chad. Who I'm actually good friends with. Um, I, I hope it continues to just keep pushing forward and forward because no one scores more points than the specialists. And if you've got, you, you don't see any Super Bowl winning teams with a back kicker. So I think it's a, uh, it's a position that needs to be taken more seriously in the draft and. I hope that us that have been getting drafted early and earlier can keep putting a good name out there for those guys and keep pushing it further and further up, and maybe we can start getting guys in the second round again.
I love that. So like last year, let's just dig into it a little bit. I don't wanna talk that much about it because it was last year, this is this year, you're already focused on this. It was a bit up and down. I mean, the first game, you snapped that 17 game losing streak. We love to see it. You're, everybody I talk to about you, dude, says that you're so confident. You, you don't lack in that. You've got a new guy that's really excited to work with you there and Bubba. Uh, you know, I'm gonna ask you, since it, there were some ups and downs, as there should be, your rookie year, especially sure. kicking in Cleveland, what was your highest high of last year? Did we just see it? What was like the best moment you had? I mean, yeah, that was that was definitely up there. But I think one of my other good moments was the Patriots game because I had come off of a missing a game winning kick and it was a pretty low moment for me. I had to like really be um, intentional, intentional about pulling myself out of that and just going on next game and just having a good game the next week felt pretty good. Um, and it's never really been like the big moments that I fall from, like mm -hmm. I struggle with, because even that game winning kick that I missed, I missed it by a foot and I hit it really well and I can't get too mad about it. Um, it's more been like those small moments where I get too confident or too comfortable and I really just need to be better about hyper-focusing on those kind of stuff. And if you make all the game winners but miss everything else, you're not going to have a good year. So I just – it's a, it's a smaller, like, medium-range kick, so I just need to put a little more focus on it. It's exactly what I did my freshman year of college, too. So okay. just a lesson to learn and move on to next year. So then how, how are you focusing on that? Like, what do you – like, teach me a little something. Like, what do you – how do you attack that this year? It's not necessarily kicking the ball better or anything like that. It's more just having the same routine for every kick and trying to recreate. I don't ever want to be comfortable because when I get comfortable, that's when, like, I think stuff starts to go wrong. So I just putting myself in situations where I'm never comfortable yeah. and trying to just recreate the same kick every time, especially with the mental game. I would tell myself if I can make it to a jet ski on the 15th try because it would take me – a million tries to do it. I can do this in this whatever situation that is. Here's the deal. So I do like a, a live show every day, right? So things go wrong every mm -hmm. show. And I don't have any time sure. to think about it because I get off set and I'm like, oh, should I have a show in 23 hours? Like I have, I move on right away. I would not like it if I had a week between shows because I would, I am a stew on it person. I And the way that I live my life, like it doesn't, to affect me that way like I have to just be on my stuff and like roll out there how do you go through a week where maybe like you didn't like a kick or like I'm not even talking about with the Browns just in general in your in your mindset like how do you manage not thinking about what happened when you have a whole week between games I don't think you can try and stop yourself from thinking about it because if you if you tell yourself to not think about an elephant you're going to think about an elephant like it's like you can't just like not like push it out of your mind i think yeah. you have to think about it and accept it um and it's more about for me uh for the first time in my career i actually missed two kicks in a row this last season which was probably my least favorite moment about the whole year mm. um i've been pride myself in being good about whenever something goes wrong i almost get even more motivated and be able to step up in the next moment so whenever I have a bad game, I usually don't follow it with two bad games in a row. I usually, or at least the next kick I go out there, it's going to be a good kick. Um, so I kind of try and channel it to almost pissing me off and, like, going to, like, be really good on the next one. Yeah. Um, I try not to let it leak into, oh, well, no, what if I do it again? Um, so it's more just you have, to, you have to think about it, accept it, and be able to kind of channel that in the right direction rather than letting it go in the wrong way. I love that. I, Kate, you're going to have a great second year. I'm so excited to watch it. Uh, Bubba, when you, you know, last time I heard from you was quotes that I was reading. You were at your locker cleaning it up like that sucks. Nobody wants to end a season cleaning up their locker, feeling like they want more to give. And then you have Bubba Ventrone mm -hmm. come in there, and he says that he had you ranked like high as hell on his list of guys, and he's so excited to work with you. Have you sp spent time with him? What's that been like? Yeah, we spent plenty of time together, um, and I've I've really enjoyed it. Um, I love Coach Preef, and I yeah. have think the world of him, and he's one of the reasons he's the reason I'm here, yeah. and I have nothing but positive things to say about him. But Bubba is a very like they're kind of opposites of each other, um, and it's kind of a cool new start. Um, so it's been it's been Bubba's much more. Um, give you a ton of space and it's uh it's been pretty cool to kind of go through with him um and i'm enjoying getting to know him and it's cool that he played here um and it's cool that actually i knew him from the draft process from before and i've only heard good things about him and i'm excited to see how it goes 
Okay, so when you say that he gives you space, I like that because you were adamant, Cade, that given the opportunity, you could break the NFL record for longest field goal of 68 yards. 68 yards! Is Bubba the kind of guy that will give you that opportunity if it comes up this season? See, I've always, I don't think, I think pre would have let me do that last year if he would have had the chance. I don't <laughs> think that's a special teams coordinator. I think that's more of a situational thing, but I'm sure any special teams coordinator, if their their kicker's confident, they would be excited to watch them do that. Uh, I mean, I would like to see that. I would just, I, mean, I need to get, I need a direct line to old Bubba, and I'd like to see that happen. Um, okay, I would love to know before you go, any superstitions? Like, what are your superstitions, your rituals look like? Oh, there's so many. I, I try not to let it, like, if your superstitions don't go well, like, it's not, like, oh, no, now I'm going to have a bad day. So I have to be careful with that. But there are, like, tons of random things I do all the time. Um, like, when I'm in pregame, if you watch me, the way I kick in the net, I do the same. After the last kick, I, like, pick the ball up, I spin it in my hands, and then I, like, drop it and drop kick it with my heel backwards into the net, like, huh. every time. Um, I do I have the same thoughts in my head every time I go and kick, or I try to, again, something I'm going to be better about next year. Um, what are the thoughts? I have, uh, I'll keep that one to myself. Okay. <laughs> um, and, uh, and like in the locker room, like pregame, like I eat the same food all the time. I have the same gummies. I have like a Rice Krispie treat at halftime. Like there's tons of stuff. You it's, have a Rice Krispie treat at halftime? <laughs> like out of the wrapper or like somebody makes them for you? No, out of the out of the wrapper. <laughs> that's so cute. That's like, I think that's a popular thing because like I didn't have to ask for it. Like LSU did it, and now I like, came to Browns, and they're all there. You need to get that so. that Rice Krispie Treat sponsorship, Katie York, and we are hoping for it. We wish you luck. Let me tell me before you go the vibe around that Cleveland. I mean, those fans, they want to win. They want to contend, of course. What is the vibe and the energy yeah. around the facility right now? The. I, the vibe on the facility is everything like we're doing a bunch of different stuff this year. Like I don't, I haven't heard one negative thing yet, which has been, it was something I was used to at LSU because the last two years was a bunch of like turmoil and struggle. And even last year it was a little bit wishy-washy, but I've heard like zero negative stuff. It's like the most team camar team camaraderie I've been around since my freshman year at LSU. Um, it's been actually like very enjoyable to go to work every day. And I've actually, I'm like, Excited to walk back in there after this and get back to work. So it's pretty cool. Sorry they kicked you out to your car, buddy, but we appreciate you making the time. Katie York, everybody, with the Cleveland Browns entering year two. The word is excitement. The word is 68-yard field goal. You won't tell me your thoughts, but we're giving you all the Rice Krispie Treat vibes going into 2023. Good luck and thank you. And just get a burger. Just like...